and still she'll flip and keep you turn to come back to this cow. But when you show a horse that they've been trained to make a lot of high pressure, man, you can't keep them from running off. And you need to spend a lot of time waiting on this waiting on this mare. I should be spending a lot more time if this was a home situation. Every time this mare actually comes back to this cow, he wasn't trying to get a lot of horses worked in a day's time. In a clinic situation, you could sit there and let this mare, I mean, when she sits here and stops, just let her sit here for five or ten minutes. In a clinic situation, it's, uh, you know, you're always trying to hurry up and get through as so many horses, but if you were home, you could let this mare sit here you know, all as long as you wanted until she just walks off the job. And when she walks off, you'll show that walking off is where the pressure comes, sitting beside this cow is never any pressure. Or backing up with this cow or turn around this cow. What we're gonna try to do here is, this horse is gonna naturally wanna go back to this other horse and uh, just to herd instinct, she's gonna try to get away and get some safety with another horse. And we did this one time on her two weeks ago. So, I mean, she left there probably 15 different times and found out this cow was safety. And then we just, I mean, we're trying to set up a situation where this mare is, uh, you know, just trying to confuse them where they're going to generally hit flight again. And when they hit flight, you're just going to reconfirm that hitting flight never does work. Try to move this mare around here a little bit. And I really wish, see, she kind of started to leave right there, but thought I better come back to this cow. And all you're trying to do here on this, on this cutting horse is set this horse up to where when she wants to look at a herd holder or something, I mean, she just better look at this cow she's working. I mean, you just have to take that natural instinct away from them like they want to go to another horse or another herd. It's the same instinct that, like they have naturally instinct to hit flight, they're also their natural instinct is to go to another horse and a herd versus me or this cow. So we just have to just show them that that instinct never does work best deal is just find this cow. In summary, what you just saw here was everything we ended up doing to that mare, stopping her feet, getting calm was her only release she ever got. Every time she got nervous and confused, she just, it never did do her a bit of good. So all you're trying to do is reconfirm every day you try to work them, every time you try to work them, whether you're leading them or bringing them in this pen or riding them, and getting nervous is never an option. Stopping them feet and getting calm is. And it doesn't matter on really whatever you're trying to do. You know, instinctively they want to hit flight. Instinctively they want to go to that other horse for a herd. But you just have to show them it never does work. Getting calm don't think it does work. We've had this mare saddle up twice. It was a couple weeks ago. And uh, she did fine. We had we had had somebody riding her for two different days. We rode her we rode her about the first hour we messed with her. We had her hooked on a cow and we brought her in here and saddled her up. But you're a lot better off, I think, if you just make if you just have these horses to move off until they stop you again, you're rewarding this horse for stopping. You're not, uh, you're not trying to make this horse hold still. You just start causing her to leave. And, uh, and they just get to where they'll day. Only the best way to make a horse quit moving around is just cause them to move around. I mean, the more you cause them to move off, the less they want to do it and the more they want to stop. But you know, these young horses, I don't care how wild they are and how spooky they are when you first try them, if you showed them that getting spooky never does help and it's stopping their feet and getting calm, it's the same way they're going to sit right here and let you saddle them up for the first time. And they'll dang sure let you just get calm and saddle them up because they find out they're getting nervous and moving that rear end around and moving off and hitting flight. That never does work just like it doesn't ever hit work on that cow. So again, it's just another way to show them you know, that hitting flight never does work. Let's try to bring my cow back in here, somebody, and we'll, uh, I'm gonna hook this mare up with this cow again.
See right here, she's gonna be a little bit more nervous with a rider on the back, which is gonna cause her to dang sure wanna go back to this cow for more safety. Again, it's just like that horseman. When a colt walks off from his mother and if the jackrabbit jumps up, she may turn back a little bit to her mother, but if the mountain lion jumps out, I mean, she's gonna dang sure get back to his mother. Same way right here, you can increase this pressure by having a rider on there. And then I'll have him start kicking around on her because it'll cause a little bit more pressure if she kind of gets hooked on here. So him causing pressure is going to make her really want to get back to that cow more. And I know we're training these horses wrong when you can take a horse that's got going on three or four hours of work here and that bird will run to this cow. We'll get her out in a bigger pen tomorrow. But this right here is exactly what a horse won't do when they've had a lot of training. We're gonna get this mare used to a saddle while she's working this cow out here. And then we'll get her kind of hooked on this cow again like we did a while ago. In that small pen. As soon as we kind of get her to kind of quit fleeing, going to those other horses, then I'm gonna stick a rider on her without a bridle on. Let her get used to a rider doing the same thing. You have to go through all these steps, starting from that small pen over there. And you have to just bring up this next bigger pen. And this bigger pen is going to be just enough to kind of confuse her. And anytime she gets confused, she's going to hit flat again. And she'll probably try to run into some of these horses and run into some of these cattle. But she's just going to find out that she can run all she wants. But it's never going to do her any good until she stops her feet and finds this cow right here. She may run five minutes, she may run for an hour before she ever does it. I don't, I'm not sure. But, uh, but one thing about it, she can run as long as she wants. And I'll just keep sitting right here letting her work until she decides to come back to this cow. Then we're going to do just like that other pen. We ain't going to care how many times she runs around this pen. Get away from that pen. But again, we've allowed this horse to play, which is a whole lot better than sitting there trying to hang on to her with a bridle. So now when she mentally gets confused, she can, she can think about fleeing all she wants but it's never gonna do any good. And the other way, when a horse mentally thinks about